In 1 Peter 3 and 15, we read, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. Peter was writing to Christians that were suffering for the faith, and he encouraged them to set apart Jesus as Lord of their hearts, that is to let him rule completely. And letting him rule their hearts would conquer fear. They should seek God. They should have fellowship with him. They should follow him and they should worship him. When we let Jesus rule our hearts, we will be different. And the world takes notice that we are different and we need to be ready to tell others the good news. Why we have hope. This is not lifestyle evangelism. We need to be ready with words. Why do you have hope? Why are you willing to endure suffering? Why do you love others? Many non-believers are seekers and they're not closed off to hearing the gospel. And we need to be ready to have a defense, not just to defend the truth, but to advance the gospel. That is not arguing with people, but sharing the good news, remembering how merciful God has been to us. 1 Peter 3 and 15 tells us, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Jesus should rule our hearts. If our relationship with God is not the most important relationship in our life, our priorities are out of whack. We need to love God and then love people. That is the proper order and the proper way to love people is to love God first and obey Him. Our relationship with Christ is not just a personal matter. That is, we should not be afraid to discuss the good news with others, to tell others about Jesus. We need to live our faith. We need to breathe our faith. We need to share our faith. And always humbly and with love. We need to be ready. We need to know what we believe. We need to immerse ourselves in God's Israel had great advantages in having the law, in having the ordinances, the Old Testament as a whole, but we today have even greater advantages. For today, the Spirit, God the Spirit Himself, dwells within us, and we have the whole Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament together. We are tremendously blessed. We're also blessed with many resources that the first century could not even imagine. We have commentaries readily available. We have the Bible even available on our phones, and we have the Bible in our own language. We must prioritize to study God's Word, to meditate upon God's Word, to pray and to have fellowship with other believers. The biblically illiterate will have a very difficult time in defending the faith. Many unbelievers know the Word better than most Christians, and Satan knows the word. He even tried to use it against Jesus in the temptation, but Jesus rebuked the devil with the word. Are you prepared for the battle? Are you ready with a defense? We need to be ready, and not just to tell unbelievers, not just to defend the faith, but we also need to be ready to be able to teach new Christians and to teach the next generation. We will not have all the answers, and that is okay. But we need to know why we believe in what we believe, and we can always learn more. God, thank you for the hope that I have in you. Thank you for loving me despite my sins, despite my failures. Please strengthen my heart and encourage me in your word. Help me to know you better. Thank you for the great advantages that I have today. Help me as I endure suffering. 
Help me to love you more and help me to be pleasing to you in all things. In the holy name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.